Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Uh, so I do a lot of uh, storytelling in my classes. I do a lot of storytelling and anecdotes uh, when I give talks to uh, groups or teams uh, or classes or companies. Um, and so uh, I believe, the reason I do that, I believe that the secret sauce to success uh, whether it be training and fitness, whether it be losing weight, whether it be uh, going after a graduate degree, uh, starting a company, uh, building a relationship with, with someone important to you, I believe it comes down more to your mindset than it does to any specific X's and O's. What's up, Chris? And so um, I, I tell stories over and over again. Uh, my classes get tired of it. My kids get tired of it. Uh, hey, Teresa. Uh, but I again, I believe that's where the magic is. The magic to losing weight is not in, is not in uh, the the recipes, the diets, the training programs. The magic is in the mindset. So uh, before I head off to my son's game today, uh, I thought I'd stop in and give you guys uh, one of my go-to stories. Uh, one of my go-to stories that I tell over and over again. People, when I say it, will who have been in my classes will say, "Oh, here we go again." Uh, but hopefully, you know, many of you uh, will relate to it. Hopefully it will resonate with you. And I'll give you on the back end, I'll give you the message. What's up, Raymond? What's up, Big Chris? Hey, Brent. Uh, I'll give you the message and the lesson behind the story. All right. So uh, for those who have known me for more than, you know, 10, 20 years, uh, know that I grew up with asthma. Right? I grew up with asthma. I mean, go to the hospital, get a shot. Every 30 minutes, asthma. I mean, carry, carry your inhaler around, asthma. I mean, wheezing, uh, exercise-induced uh, bronchial asthma, right? Uh, so my daughter has asthma now. And so, you know, to her chagrin, I can, I can, you know, I understand what it is. So I understand what it's not, right? And so my asthma story goes back to 1990, right? And even before that. So, again, I grew up as a kid with asthma, you know, I grew up, uh, I was born uh, prematurely and had jaundice. So I was a sickly baby uh, for much of my life, right? Much of my early life. And my mom was worried about me all the time, about getting sick, about, you know, going to the hospital, about having an asthma attack or whatever. So um, I grew up, you know, in an environment where my mom was always afraid of me being sick. So, but as a kid... You know, when you're a kid, you don't really understand or even care about any ailments you have, any conditions you have, any diseases you have. All you want to do as a kid is play and have fun. And so um, so I would always have to be called back inside. Right. Hey, Nelson, God bless you, brother. Called back inside to take my medication, to, to put a jacket on, to, to, to take my inhaler if I was wheezing. You know, the reminder, Bobby, get inside, you're wheezing, you need to sit down, settle down. You know, so when you're a kid, you don't even think about it, right? You, you know, you have to be reminded that you have a condition because all you want to do is play. So, you know, from the age of, you know, as, as an infant and a toddler and, and an adolescent up until, you know, through middle school, I had to be reminded to, to take medication, uh, be reminded that I had asthma. Okay, so fast forward now, as I became a, a teenager and a preteen, I began to understand what asthma was. And more importantly, even though I had a strong work ethic, I began to understand how asthma could get me out of stuff, right? Out of conditioning at the end of practice, out of a particular drill that I, that I didn't want to do, out of uh, the whole practice if I thought, uh, I thought it was getting too difficult or too challenging. So like many of us, as we get older, we begin to use what is a real ailment, what might be a real uh, detriment, we begin to, to, we begin to magnify it, right? And use it as a crutch to get out of some, certain things. And our subconscious uses that to protect our, 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 our ego, Right, you know the psychology, e ego, id, and whatever. It begins to protect ourselves from, from this this belief that we are the ones who are lazy. We are the ones who are getting out of whatever challenge there is in front of us, and we use this asthma, sickness, injury, whatever it is, as a crutch to get out of stuff. 
All right, so even though I've always had this strong work ethic, what's up, Corey? This strong drive to be better, uh, even I am susceptible to this condition, to this to this uh, pull from our subconscious to get out of stuff. And so I began to use that asthma as a crutch, and I began to magnify it. So in high school, once I had established myself as being good at football or basketball or whatever it was, I began to use that in certain at certain times when I deemed it um, when I wanted to use it to get out of stuff, right? I, I went to high school down in in Monterey where the where the the, the temperature, the uh, weather is temperate, right? So seventies, you know, mid seventies is hot for for that area, and so um, I began to use my asthma as a crutch, right? So now we fast forward. Right to to UC Davis, where I played football at, now 1990, August 1990. Everybody who knows me knows I use August 15th as one of my other stories that I tell. As August 15th being the last time I missed more than four days of working out in a row. But let's go August 16th, maybe 17th. Right, a few days into my college football career. All right, now you know I, I'm, I'm at UC Davis, where it's 105 degrees probably. Coming from from a, a climate in Monterey where it might be seventy five degrees, right? I have my look, my football look, which is tights, you know, long sleeves, wristbands, gloves. You know, all athletes can attest to this. You have a certain look that you have to have that gives you confidence. So I took that same look that I wore in high school at Seaside in Monterey, where it's, where the climate is, is is chilly. I took that same look as like an idiot to UC Davis, the valley of Sacramento, where it's hot. Now, right, I'm, I'm trying to wear the same look, long sleeves, tights, wristbands, gloves, bandana. I'm trying to wear the same look in 105 degree weather, right? So we're in a week one, hell week, double days, really triple days for, for, the, for the skill positions. And now we're going through conditioning, right, at UC Davis. Right. And, you know, when you go to a college program, you go into a, a scenario where now you might have, you know, we had probably 35, 40, 50 people, 50 kids, 50, not kids, young men, 50 young men who play, who are playing defensive back. Right. Either cornerback or safety. So now I'm going from a situation where I was a starter in a group that might have been 10 of us. In high school, now I'm going to a, a a college trying to make the team in 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 a scenario to now where there's probably 45, you know, 45 defensive backs trying out for, you know, eight ten spots, four starting positions, right? Uh, you know, ranging from 17, which is how old how old, how old I was, to 22, 23 year olds. Right. And now it's competitive and everyone's trying to trying to make the team, trying to compete to be a starter. I'm competing against guys who have been at in college for three, four or five years. Right. And now we're conditioning. Right. And now we got to do sprints. Right. Cornerbacks and receivers in college run more than anybody. So now we got to do this this conditioning test. where We have to do 100 meter, 100 yard sprints for time. Right. 100 yard, the whole group. Right. And it didn't count unless we all met some certain time. And so we're sprinting, right? And this is after practice, after after you know uh, a two-hour practice, probably the second of two-hour practices, and we're doing sprints. Most of the groups are done. Quarterbacks are, are washed up, heading to lunch. Linemen are done, heading to lunch, and here we are out there still conditioning, right? So we're into maybe the fourth, fifth sprint, right? And I'm, I begin to wheeze, like really wheeze. Like, right. And and just like in high school, I began to magnify it either consciously or subconsciously. And now I'm, I'm wheezing and now I'm kind of like, OK, I'm not going to be able to do these sprints full speed, I think. Right. I don't want to look bad, I think. And I also don't want to hurt. Who wants to hurt? So I tell the coach, look, coach, I'm wheezing. I got to sit out. Right. And he turns to me. Coach Woods, I'll never forget him. He died of cancer. He turns to me and says, uh, okay, okay, Blyford. So we had these, we had these, these, this tape on our helmet. Right? When you first go to college for most most schools, you don't get the decal, by the way, you get to earn the decal. So everyone has has a blank slate, so to speak. So we have the gold helmets for UC Davis, and we have tape 
right? And the equipment manager writes all the last names on the helmets. So the coach can say, hey, you, Smith, or you, Anderson, or you, Cooper, stop doing that, or that's a dumb, whatever it was, right? So the equipment equipment manager wrote the, the you in my name long enough to where it appeared to be a Y, right? I love telling the story because it, 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 it goes to the point of progression in life. How you're at the top of the mountain and then the bottom of the mountain. Top, bottom, top, bottom. Throughout your life, right? You might be the best, a senior, and then you're a freshman again. You might be great at this job and you advance to another position to where you're, you're new at it, right? Mm -hmm. So from high school, you know, being all league, being, being a starter, you know, being recruited to go to college. Now I'm back to where I started. In high school, now I'm in college at the bottom of the mountain again, right? So I have a I have a, a nameplate, a sticker, a piece of tape that says Blueford, but the U is too long. So the coach tells me, I say, coach, I'm wheezing. I can't breathe. I can't finish the sprints. And he turns to me and he says, okay, Blyford, go sit down. Go sit. I said, it's Blueford. He says, I don't care. He said, make a play, and I remember your name. I always tell that story. Make a play, Blyford, and I remember your name, all right? So... He says, Blyford, go sit down. You, you, I don't want you to die. You, you wheezing, go sit down. And I said, coach, I'm, I'm really wheezing. I can't breathe. He said, I'm really serious. Go sit the fuck down. Right? If you can't, you can't breathe, go sit down. And so I go over to the side, right, in the shade, and the trainers come over to give me my, my inhaler. I'm taking my inhaler. <gasps> I'm breathing. I'm drinking some water. I'm hydrating. And as I'm doing this, I'm looking back on the field, Right? The coach has turned his back on me. He's watching the other 44 DBs now do the sprints, right? He blows the whistle. They all go, right? They wait 40 seconds or whatever it was. He blows the whistle. They all go again. I'm sitting here, right? I'm watching 44 DBs. It was 45. Now I'm out. 44 DBs conditioned to become college football players, right? And so... What I realized at that point in time, and this is the lesson, is that nobody cares what the reason is you can't do what you need to do to get better, right? Nobody cares what the reason is you can't do what the fuck you need to do to get better. I can't say it more, more bluntly than that, right? So you can't study for a test. The test is still going to be tomorrow. You might get extended to, the, to two days, but the test is still coming up. Right? You can't get home to your wife enough times throughout the year. She's still going to be mad at you and might leave you. Right? You can't make it to your son's games, you know, because you work. Right? When he's 22, he's still going to remember you didn't make his games. The, the reason don't matter. Right? You can't get up and work out because you're too tired or, 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 or your schedule is too long or, or you're too busy. Your fat cells don't care what the reason is you can't exercise. Right, so life has a way of, of, of reminding you that it doesn't matter what the reason is. You can't do what you need to do to get better. Right, so I realized at that point in time, I could do one of three things. One of three things. And I, I, I did a video about this a while ago. Right, I can either accept the fact that I have asthma, right, and say, look, I can't play, right, and accept that I can't be a college football player, the dream I've had since I was eight years old, right, I can wait. And see if it gets better and I outgrow it, if ever, right? At that time, still accepting that for right now, I can't do anything about it. Or I can find a way to work around it, right? Make sure I have my, my inhaler. Make sure I condition myself to, to minimize the, the, the chances of me getting asthma. Or just deal with it as I've been doing my whole life anyway, right? So we have to understand that in life... Nobody cares, right? So you go to a, you go to an inner city school and, and can't bring your books home, and a guy over in this area of, of town, you know, has a tutor, has books, his mom can afford this and that. So what? So what? What does that matter? You think UCLA or Stanford or UC Berkeley or whatever school you want to go to cares what the reason is you can't study? Right? So you're a point guard and you're a little smaller. Right, and because you, your dad is not very big, right, or your mom's dad isn't very big, right. So all the other point guards that you're competing against are bigger. So what? So what? Nobody cares. 
Nobody cares. So you can't study as often as you can for your for your for your GMAT or your or your or your uh, to get into law school because you have two kids and the girl who, who's competing with you in your study group has no kids and she's ten years younger. So what? So what? Deal with it. Deal with it. Forget about being great, or work away or work your way around it. Work your way around it. Right? I get tired of telling people all the time, like, I come to, come to my class, I'm sick, I'm tired. So what? Right? And, and I'm always the asshole when I say that to people, right? But I'm trying to remind them that your fat cells don't care what the reason is. Well, I was really, I was sick, I had a knee injury, my ankle was, who cares? Your fat cells don't care, why would I care? The admittance program, the admittance uh, department, admissions department at that college doesn't care that you were sick for two weeks. And fail two tests. They don't care what the reason was. All they know is the guy below you on the list got an A on that test and you didn't. Right? You're getting ready to go to college to play football and miss a month because you, you were doing whatever. You had to work or whatever. So you couldn't work out. You couldn't lift weights. Now you go to camp. Right? And you're slower and weaker than the guy who didn't have to do that. The coach don't care what the reason is. Right? There's a game coming up on Sunday. You injured and can't practice and can't play well. The guy behind you, your backup, could practice and is ready to go. That's all the coach cares about is that he can practice. He can play. Oh, well, I'm really hurt, coach. Okay. The game is Sunday. The game is Sunday whether you hurt or not. Right? The test is Monday whether you studied or not. Right? The fast sales respond a certain way whether you have an excuse for it or not. Right, so the coach was gonna 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 find somebody to play cornerback, whether I had asthma or not. Right, I, I do a story on, on my blog about they're always recruiting. Like they'll find somebody to replace you. Right, you can't stay late at work and get better and get that project done early because your your daughter has a recital, or whatever. The boss doesn't care. Right, the one who's competing with that position with you, she did stay late. Right? That's the reality of how life works, guys. And when you bring it back to fitness, that's the reality. Right? If you are okay being overweight, or if you're a guy being skinny, right, then, then this won't matter. But if you're not okay with it and just happen to have imperfect conditions, you work a lot, you have kids, you're tired all the time, your muscles and your fat cells don't care. What the reason is that you can't do what you need to do to get better. They don't care. They don't care. So find a way to make it work. Right? Find a way to make it work. Because if you try hard enough, I promise you, you'll find four hours where you're watching Housewives. You'll find two hours where you're on the phone. You'll find four hours when you're on Facebook. You'll find two hours that you, over that you slept longer than you should have. Right? You'll find another hour where you are bullshitting doing this or that. Right? If you want to, if it's important to you. Right? You'll find that that pain in your ankle is only a pain threshold. The doctor told you it wasn't, it wasn't damaged, it wasn't torn. So it's a matter of discomfort. Right? You'll find out that, that yes, you might be sick, but you ain't, you ain't, you ain't on, the, on your deathbed. Right? And so your subconscious is trying to find excuses. The same way it was with me. And my asthma, your subconscious is trying to find excuses to protect you from feeling bad about what the fuck you're doing and not doing. Right? So find a way to work around the things that are stopping you from doing what you need to do to get better. Simple as that. I got to write a book. Right? And I've been using all these damn excuses to not write it. Right? Including the fact that my kids now are in basketball and dance and, and, and school basketball. Right, so now that their schedule is clearing up, a part of me is getting nervous because at least part of my excuse is going away. Right, is it a real excuse? Yeah, but the book don't care what the reason is. Right, the book don't care that, that I have a real reason why I haven't finished it. Either I finished it or I didn't. Either you're fat or you're not. Either you have a law degree or you don't. Either you made the point guard uh, or the football team or the basketball team or you didn't. Simple as that. And you can't look back in, in, in time and, and tell the gods of, of success why you didn't make it. Because the gods of success don't care what the reason is. They don't care. 
All they know is, did you do what you needed to do to get better? Not how hard, hard it was to do it, how much stuff you had to navigate and overcome to do it. Did you do it? No one cares how much you had to overcome to do it. Did you do it? Did you study for the test? Did you get ready for the, for the GMAT or the LSAT? Did you stay late to do the project at work? Did you spend time on the treadmill or lifting weights to get ready? Did you, did you watch the carbs? Whatever you have to do, did you do it? Uh, but, but did you do it? Yes or no? Did you do it? Yes or no? Simple as that. And if you didn't, don't blame them. Don't blame everybody else. Don't blame where you were born. Don't blame who you were born to. Don't blame how skinny you are, your genetics, that you don't have this or that. Don't, don't have money. Don't bl blame yourself. Because you're pointing around things that everybody else is an excuse. Even if it's not perfect. And it won't be, I promise you. It won't be perfect. Right? Even if it's not perfect, look inside at you. And begin to do whatever you need to do to have what you want to have, to be what you want to be. Whether it's asthma, whether it's time, whether it's money, right? Stop making excuses for not doing what you need to do to be what you want to be, have what you want to have in life. Simple as that, guys. All right, so that's my asthma story, right? So at that point, going back full circle, at that point, I realized that I had to work around it. Right? Stop making excuses for doing things and get better. Right? And a part of me told myself, if you die of an asthma attack while trying to get better, I could deal with that. I didn't die, obviously. Right? In fact, I over I, I outgrew my asthma. But there's ways to, to, to win this race. There's ways for you to get your law degree. There's ways for you to lose 50 pounds. There's ways for you to write that book, Bobby. There's ways for you to be what you want to be, no matter how hard it is, no matter what the obstacles are right now in front of you. You just got to be honest with yourself, right? And do whatever you got to do to become what you want to become, right? Be what you want to be. Have what you want to have in life. All right, guys? So that's my message today. That's my story. Uh, that's the asthma story. So if, you, if I ever say, has anybody heard the asthma story? Now you know it. Now you know it. All right, guys. So um, that's it. Have a great day. I got to rush out of here. Take my son to his basketball game. I'm going to give him the same exact story in the car. Because he's, he's he been making excuses for why he ain't, he ain't great. I got to remind him about the asthma story. All right, guys. Have a good day. Uh, Coach Bobby saying, Every day we're trying to get better, guys. One step forward. That's it. One step forward. Right? Don't get it all at once. One step forward. Just be better today than you were yesterday. That's it. BTY, guys. As always, Coach Bobby saying BTY, better than yesterday. Love you guys. Bye-bye.